Edge of Sports on the PPI Network. It's Edge of Sports on the PPI Network. My name is Jeremiah Tittle. In for Dave Zirin, who is on his book tour for the John Carlos story. Now we're going to speak to one of the panelists and also on the advisory board, I understand, uh, for the Shirley Povich Symposium and the Shirley Povich uh, Center for Journalism, which is brand new here at the Philip Merrill School of Journalism at University of Maryland, ESPN's own Scott Van Pelt. What a night. That was a tremendous night. 50 years. Think of the progress that has taken place since uh, NFL Hall of Famer Bobby Mitchell and uh, Daryl Hill uh, graced uh, this campus for the first time. Uh, What are your thoughts on what uh, took place last uh, over the course of tonight, the discussion, as well as uh, the progress that's made been made. Well, I mean, to to listen to I, the stories that Bobby tells is, and, this, and that Daryl tell are just stunning. And and it's, I told the story about how I think that you know the term black quarterback has been stricken from our lexicon, which is great because when I was a kid, James Harris was a quarterback, but he was actually called a black quarterback. So to me, the idea that that has been eradicated is a good thing because people that play that position are no longer defined by their race because that's stupid because you're just a quarterback. You're not anything other than that or anything more than that. So that that to me seems like progress. But when I hear those guys tell those stories of what they endured, it's just staggering to me and it's sickening to me. And it's just the dignity that they carry themselves with, I I just am always humbled by. And um, I don't know, it's just there's such value in in just the grace of a guy like Bobby Mitchell. I mean, has anybody ever spit on your shoes in a restaurant just because you were eating there? Right. Well, I mean, when you hear that, it just it makes me physically ill to think of that. And um, again, there he is, you know, in good humor telling those stories. About, and, you know, Daryl Hill's telling stories about how they enjoyed being in the South because if they went to the black hotel that the staff would be excited that this team was there and they took care of them. And you think, you know, to deal with it with a smile, I mean, there's, I think there's a, there's a message there beyond just what's being said. And um, I don't know, I'm just, I've done this every year that they've asked and I'm always, I'm always honored to do it. Well, uh, we really appreciate your humor and everything you bring to it because you need some levity sometimes. It's such a heavy topic. A bit, yeah. um, we talked to uh, Commissioner Tagliabue about um, general managers getting mo- applying the Rooney Rule to um, to management, to ownership. We have Michael Jordan, but beyond that, we're seeing all white. Um, uh, I would ask you to comment on that, but I want to talk more about a very interesting discussion between you and Wilbon, mostly about journalism. Mm-hmm and more African-Americans, more minority viewpoints. Right. Well, he, the, when, the, when uh, Brian Gumbel made his uh, comments about Commissioner Stern, I had Michael on that day, and we talked about what Gumbel said. And it's a hard conversation to have. And Michael said, harder for me you know, as a white guy, because there, there are just their words that, and flags that go up the minute that the topic comes up. Because, sadly, I think people are sitting around waiting to be offended. And... I'm sitting there wanting to talk, to have the dialogue, uh, especially from a guy like like Michael's perspective, who has been a, at the Post for 30 years and has, is, a, is a Medill guy from Northwestern and is one of the most respected voices in his profession and is an African American male. He's got everything that I could want to talk to this about with this topic. So let's talk about it. And it's hard, as he said, anytime race comes up, it's incredibly difficult to discuss honestly uh, because I think fear becomes part of the equation. I'm not afraid to do it. Um, and that day with the, with the Gumbel comments, we, we talked about it. And it was really interesting to see the way people reacted to me. Um, there were some black people that said, how do you know anything about the black experience? And I said, I don't claim to. I don't claim to. All I, can, all I bring is my perspective, and I'm sharing it with you, but I'm not afraid to share it with you. So that's the kind of thing that I wish we were able to do more. I hate the word transparent. It like, sounds like you're saying honest, but I'm, I want more credit for it. You know what I'm saying? But I think that people ought to be able to just be more open with each other about a topic like this because that's the only way progress gets made because when you, when it's back behind the door, right, lurking, but you just ignore it, nothing changes. Nothing. And I thought it was really interesting uh, what Wilbon said. Here I am getting you to comment on Wilbon's comments. But um, what he said about the fact that he's not just an African-American. He is a complex human being. Mm-hmm. He is. He went to Catholic school. He's from the Midwest. Right, right. And all that's true about you and me, but... Um, whether it was a period of time or we're still uh, in the media maybe wanting to identify uh, elements um, of someone's background, kind of like Teresa said, Teresa Moore, the documentary filmmaker, was really interesting talking about had two parents. To to have to Mm. point that out, Mm. that was just really, it just seems so wrong when she points it out. Sure. But, um, 
you know, I'm just throwing it all at you. What, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, Wilbon's point. It, it, look, I I could be, I could be the the tall sports guy, the bald sports guy, the tall bald sports guy that wears the little geeky glasses. That now there's a cartoon character that looks a lot like me. Apparently, do, can, do I get royalties? How does that? You happen? should. You should. Yeah. What's it? Alan Gregory. What's that about? Um, but I think that. In this, this, this people fall into this category and into this trap where the, the the Wilbon comments come out, and so then what happens? Radio producers think, "Who's the black guy we can get that can talk about this?" Well, what happened that day was that Michael comes on normally with me Wednesday. He called that day and said, "I want to come on to talk about this," and I said, "Great, right?" But the perspective I seek from Michael's isn't just, "Hey, you're a man of color, you must know what." The, I want to I want to know because of the fact that he and Gumbel are. Uh, Gumble was a mentor, and, and does the, what does he and what and what does he think? Does he think there's truth to this? Because because ultimately, and Michael wasn't afraid to tackle that. It isn't are these comments this or that. It's is there any truth to these comments? And Michael said he thought there was. And I thought, wow, that that to me was the if you're listening for what matters rather than listening for the buzzwords, that was the most telling comment that I thought he made. Is that if you want to take the the, the semantics out of it, that there's that there's legitimate uh, legitimate truth to to Gumbel's comments that to me was what I took away that was the takeaway of wow that's really an, an important thing that's being said here but it, it's so often it just gets lost in this this noise of you know buzzwords and did, you know what Gumbel did it himself you know he didn't say slave mash he said plantation overseer that was fascinating to me but Gumbel's a, a brilliant guy he's a brilliant guy and you know and Adrian Peterson can, can use the word slavery. Gumbel was never going to do that. But in a sense, he said the same thing. That's, that's just a very, that's a brilliant, brilliant way to do it, if, you, if that's your point. Yeah, I mean, and I would also comment and allow you to just to wrap up here about, um, you know, the need for this, mm -hmm. for these symposiums, for this type of discussion. And I think you said something to that effect as well, is that this is really healthy and it's important mm -hmm. that we do it. So how do you feel about it after this, uh, the catharsis, perhaps, that you feel? Well, again, we've done this about, I guess it's the sixth time we've done it. And I, I, I'm just, I'm humbled. Like I said, you sit up there with, with men like Hill and Mitchell and what they lived and the dignity that they dealt, that they, that they display, even having dealt with it. Um, and the important conversations that come up in a room that's, that's largely, largely, but not, not, not overwhelmingly filled with white people. I mean, it's nice to look out and see a, a mosaic that looks like your world, right? And we saw that. Um, but I, I, these are important conversations to have, and people just need to not be afraid to have them. Uh, because, it, it is, look, race is, the, 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 this, this buzzword, this, this hot-button topic, however you want to describe it, will never, ever go away. Um, and... I don't know. I, I, did you enjoy it? Was it interesting, helpful at all? I'm turning the tables on you. You're the one holding the mic. But I mean, the stories, uh, that's the first thing out of your mouth. And it really, it was the stories mm -hmm. that, uh, as you said, they humble you and they give you a, just a perspective that, mm -hmm. that, you know, when you were here at Maryland, I mean, I, I don't know how diverse it was compared to when I went to Maryland 10 years ago when I thought it was extremely diverse. And yeah. I love that about this campus, it's, about the school. Well, it's... It was eclectic then, and again, I was asked the question, and because I was friends with so many athletes, and because so often I, because I play a lot of ball, and I was, like I said, I spent a lot of time being one of the few white guys in the gym, like, I never looked at anybody as anything. It's just people, right? But you realize that that's so atypical, you know? I mean, I, there's white guys that, like, hadn't, hadn't gone to school with a black person until they came to school here, and you think... God bless you, man. Like, yeah. I, I, I hope you're not traumatized. I mean, you're, you're going to come to find that they, you know, they wanted Adidas, not the four-stripe Kenny, too, just like you. You right. know, they watched Frosty the Snowman every year. Like, it's the same. Our lives are so much the same. And those were the most valuable lessons that I found during my time here at Maryland. I'm, I'm rambling on about nothing, but, like, th three of my best friends from, from school here, and I, I, when I gave a commencement address, I told a, a story about it. It was a black kid from Atlantic City, a Puerto Rican kid from Bloomfield, New Jersey, and a Chinese Jamaican from Miami. You don't meet a lot of Chinese Jamaicans from Miami in the suburbs, but we lived on Ellicott Hall together, and we came to find that our life experiences were almost uniform. Like the template of our lives, you laid them on top of each other, and it's almost all the same, you know? The same wants and dreams and hopes and all the rest. And we'd sit up until 4 in the morning and chop it up about life, and, you know, and th those lessons were far more valuable than almost anything I learned in a class here. 
Um, and you know, stories like tonight are, are infinitely valuable too. I don't, this isn't even on topic anymore. I'm just talking about nothing. I'm sorry. You're holding the camera. You're like, could you just <laughs> shut the up? You know what it reminds me of though, is that, uh, hearing uh, Bobby Mitchell talk about at the end, how he regrets not spending more time with those people he felt yeah. were uh, just really good people, but he had, he had his own prejudice. You're exactly which, right. You know, which is, exactly that's right. mind-boggling in and of itself. Right, again, that, that, that after all of that, he'd say, I wished I'd opened the door to these people because they were, they were great people, but I saw, I saw Marshall. I saw the owner. I didn't, see, you know, I didn't see them as the people they were. But, I mean, he, he does now, and he has the, you know, the courage to stand up in front of a, or sit in front of a group of people and, and share that. So. I'm the last person to blame him, too. You, know, you don't blame him. Of course not. But that's his own personal thing that he shared with all of us tonight. Right, and, wasn't, and wasn't afraid to do so. So, I don't know, the honesty of, of, of it and the diversity of the panel and the accomplishment of the people on it. I mean, I'm just, again, I'm just sitting there humbled. I'm like, look at all these people. What, what am I doing up here? You know, I just went to school here. That, that, that's my only qualification to sit here. I should be out in the audience, you know, but they asked me to do it. And, and you're funny, too. <laughs> I, have, I have a moment here. <laughs> And they love you here. Look, they're still here. No one else is around still. Are you going to go to Bentley's tonight, too? Last time, I, I, you were going to go to Bentley's after this. No, it's, I, I'm far too old to be going into <laughs> Bentley's on a Wednesday night and just walking in like, hey. hey we're going to meet LeRon Prophet there. You're not going to go? Maybe if he's LeRon's going. going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what time is it anyway? Let's go to Bentley's. No, I don't I think he's really going. Like catchphrase. <laughs> I don't do a lot of those, but let's go to Bentley's before <laughs> when I do. Scott Van Pelt, thank you so much. My pleasure. Appreciate thank it. Right on. Some final thoughts from Scott Van Pelt. Again, my name is Jeremiah Tittle, covering uh, the 50-year anniversary of the integration of the ACC by Daryl Hill, as well as NFL Hall of Famer Bobby Mitchell. No one in the Washington, D.C. area, and I'm sure across uh, the country, can forget integrated the last pro football team uh, to bring an African-American uh, on its roster, Hall of Famer Bobby Mitchell. Edge of Sports on the PPI Network.